that is really, if you're a visitor here, we want to welcome you. And really our vision, our mission statement is to develop people into fully functioning followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can read about that in the book of, of um, Numbers. It talks about Caleb. And Caleb followed the Lord fully. And I want to, I want to, not just half-heartedly, not just when it feels good and when it's convenient. I want to fully follow the Lord. How many would say that's who I am? And I believe that that's what God is looking for. Amen. The eyes of the Lord search to and fro throughout the whole earth that He may strongly support those whose hearts are completely theirs. And I've talked about that lately about having just a heart that's divided. We can't have divided hearts. We've got to have a fully devoted heart for the Lord our God. Amen. Amen. You, you know, you can still mess up. How many know you, if you have a heart that fully falls, you can still mess up? I'm not saying in, in being a fully functioning follower, uh, your heart fully devoted that you can't mess up because we all mess up. And this pastor has his hand higher than any anybody here or in the world abroad. I have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I stand before you as one who has been forgiven, one who has had a lot of mercy demonstrated to him. God allows that, but in that, He wants me to receive that mercy and then stand to my feet and then allow my heart, which has been, which, which has been, which, which the love and the grace and the mercy have not filled my heart. And He wants me to take those things, those His mercies, amen, and stand on my feet and begin to proclaim to the whole world that Jesus Christ is God. Jesus Christ is Lord. He is a wonderful Savior. And He is coming back soon. And so we're here to get ourselves ready, 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 because the Lord is coming back. Amen? Amen. And He's coming back for people whose hearts belong to them. And that's what I feel our mission is as a church and as just as a ministry here in Albuquerque is to help people's hearts get renewed, revived, back on track, and stable. Amen? Stay. My heart belongs to Jesus and Jesus Christ alone. That's what we're here to do. This morning I want to take you to the book. Let's look at Romans chapter 7. Again, if you're a visitor, we've been going through the book of Romans. I believe a, a very timely time in our, our church family. God is teaching us. He's instructing us. He's growing and maturing us so that we might be a light to a dark world. So that we might have a message to proclaim to a world that's looking for answers. They're looking for truth. We finished off last week with Romans chapter 7 at the end, which I'd like to start with a very uh, uh, popular script. How many know Romans chapter 7? It's very popular amongst, amongst the Christian people. We know these scriptures. In verse 24, the Apostle Paul says, Wretched man that I am! Exclamation point! Who will set me free from the body of this death? Have you ever asked the Lord that question? If you've been in the Lord any amount of time and you, you realize like the Apostle Paul is saying here, I joyfully concur with the law of God. I see gosh, God's ways are right. They're wonderful. They're true. God, your law is pure. It's holy. It's righteous. Your ways are wonderful. God, you are God. But God, I'm not. And I live in this body and the wretched man that I am. God, I, I see that I sin. I fall short of the glory of God. I struggle daily. That's what Paul was saying here. God, you are holy. Your rights is true. But I'm just a man. With the, with, with the law of my mind, I understand you're God. But I have this law in my member. I have this, this flesh. I have this sin in me. And he's frustrated. Anybody been frustrated before in your Christian walk? Huh? And he comes to ask this question. Who in the world is going to set me free from this body of sin? And somebody tell me the answer. Would you please tell me? <laughs> Who will set me free? The Lord Jesus Christ. And so right off the bat, I want you to know wherever you are at in life, the Lord Jesus Christ can set you free. He will set you free. He has come to set the people free. Amen. He said, you'll know the truth and the, the truth will set you free. 
Now, we believe that we start, amen, when somebody gives their life to the Lord in genuine repentance and faith in the cross, faith in Jesus Christ. They are born again. They're born into the spiritual family of God. And there God becomes their father. We are his children. And he begins to train us and nurture us and, 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 and establish us in the, in the ways of God. Amen. But how many know, again, it starts with mercy. God, who will set me free? You will. As we go along in our Christian walk, we still realize that we still got some issues in life. Anybody? We still got some. Who's going to set me free from this thing? Come on, somebody help me this morning. Who's going to set me free from this? Jesus Christ, He will set you free. But you and I have to believe, amen, this is the narrow road. It's the straight road. It's the hard road that we're on. Amen. But our eyes have to be fixed upon the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that he's coming back for salvation for those that eagerly await him. So when I started, my hope is in Jesus Christ. On my journey halfway through the race. Amen. How many know a marathon is a long time? It's a long run. You're, you're in this thing for the long run. Everybody say, I'm in this thing for the long run. This is not just a short sprint. I, as for me and my house, I am going to stick with Jesus from this day forward until he comes back. I don't care what I face. I don't care what trials come my way. I don't care how I feel. I will be with Jesus till the end of day because my hope is in him. Who's going to set me free? His name is Jesus Christ. He started it. He's with me during it. And one of these days, he's going to come back very soon. And he will deliver this wretch that I am. Who's going to set me free? Jesus Christ will set you free. That's the heart of my God. That's the heart of our God. His heart is to set us free. He realizes we're in a dark world. He realizes you're in a flesh. He realizes you're in the world. And it is a struggle. But I guarantee you, your God is for you. If he wasn't for you, he never went to that cross. And he wouldn't have died on that cross if he wasn't for you this morning. Yes, amen. He is for you. That's right. And he went to the extent of dying on the cross. And in dying for the end on the cross, he was able, and we're going to get into Romans chapter 8 this morning. Romans chapter 8 is one of the most glorious chapters in all the Bible because it really is 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 a declaration of victory for the Christian. Amen. Yes. Jesus wants you and I victorious. But we can only be victorious as we fix our eyes on him and we understand throughout life that my God is for me. My God, listen, I would have dropped out of the race a long time ago. If deep down in my spirit, I would, if I wouldn't have come to the place to know and understand my God really is for me. Yes. He is on my side. Yes. And when I come to the reality of understanding the goodness of God, and how much He loves me and He wants for me, it breeds the fruit of peace in my heart. I stop striving. Yes, amen. I stop How many are still striving? All of us still do. We do. We do. But in that striving, we come to the place of understanding God is God. His word is true. And He is good. And He loves me. And He's coming back for my good. So God, I commit my life once again to yes, You. Yes, and as yes, You commit yes. Your life once again to You, yes. to Him, You will have the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And I believe this is where we're at. David said, man, my enemies, they encamp all around me. They're, they're all around. This was God's man, a man after my own heart. My enemies are all around. But you know what? The Lord is my refuge. And the Lord is my strength. He is my God. He knew how to go into the sanctuary of God and have the peace of God which, which allowed him to survive in the midst of a lot of crazy activity going on in his life. Amen. How many got some crazy activity going on in your life? I'm here to warn you, it might get a little more crazy. It might, it, 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 will, it might, it, it will. Let me just rephrase it. it world, the world, Jesus said, in the world you will have tribulation. But take courage, because I've overcome. You and I are different from the world. Amen? We are set apart from the world. You are set apart to the Lord your God. 
And it's up to you and I to be able to connect with him and believe in him until the day that he comes back. I've been preaching on this for a little while now that Jesus went to a cross and he died on a cross. And he left some disciples, some followers, a little disillusioned. Jesus, we thought you were supposed to take the kingdom. We thought you were going to rule and reign here and now. But now you're going to the cross. They were disillusioned. They were a little let down. Because they were let down, they might have been a little ticked off. <laughs> You've been ticked off? Why are we ticked off? Why are we mad? Come on. Let down. Didn't happen the way I thought it should happen. We get mad. Listen, we have to entrust our lives to the Lord like never before. Right. Amen. Things might get a little difficult in this world. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus said, I have overcome the world. Yes. And he has declared, I came the first time, I will come the second time, and I will make things yes. straight. Yes. Amen. But it's up to you and I to believe that. And until he makes things straight, Things straight, I'm here to tell you this morning that he has given you a wonderful gift. And that gift is the gift of the Holy Spirit that dwells inside of you and I as believers. It is the most precious gift. Don't ever look at the world and say, God, you don't love me. you got to look to the cross and you've got to look into the, your own heart. Your own heart. God, you have blessed me with your presence. You have filled me with your Holy Spirit. And that alone is enough for my life. You have given me the treasure of your kingdom. And I believe it. And you've got to learn to walk in this truth that is right inside the heart of the believer. And so Romans 8, we're going to get into it this morning. But before we go to Romans 8, turn over to Mark chapter 9 this morning. I believe the Lord wants a relationship with you and I in order to have and maintain that relationship. Can I say Matthew? Go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 9. You're going to learn Brad gets a little floated up once in a while. This quote butchers the English language. But I believe to have, what, what we're here to do is have relationship with God. Amen. How many know God is God? And He is leading. He's on His throne, but He is leading His people. And in order to, in order to have Him, if He's leading, what do we have to do? Somebody, it's written up. Thank you very much. It's written right up on that wall right there. Big, bold letters. In order to have relate, if He's going forward, if He's leading, it's up to you and I to simply have to follow after Him. Amen. We've got to follow diligently His leading. His doing. It's up to you and I. If He starts something, amen, I can't, I, I, I can't stay stuck. Everybody say, I can't stay stuck. I'm minister, I'm going to minister out of the book of Romans because I believe God wants to lead us into something new. Amen? But He can't lead us, He can't lead you into something new if you want to stay stuck right here. You've got to be willing to drop everything when, when Jesus says, hey Fred, Fred, yeah, Fred, yeah, my son, I love you very much. I've got great things for you. Come on, follow me. And, and you're saying, come on, Fred, I, got, I, I want you. I've got great things. And Fred is just stuck right here. No, 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 no. I really like what I've got right here. This is fine. This is fine with what I have. And you stay stuck. We can't stay stuck. You can't stay stuck. I can't stay stuck. And so there's some wonderful scripture that I've been meditating on in the book of Matthew chapter 10, verses 16 and 17. Matthew chapter 9. See, I told you. 16. Listen. This is really an instruction about fasting. About, uh, it was a question about fasting, but this is applicable in all of our lives. Jesus says, no one puts a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. For the patch pulls away from the garment and a worse tear results. Nor do people put new wine. Everybody say new wine. New wine. People don't put new wine into an old wine skin. Otherwise, the wineskins burst and the wine pours out and the wineskins are ruined. But they put new wine into fresh 
wineskins, and both are preserved. Amen. I believe that the Lord wants to put some new wine inside. The wine represents His Spirit. Amen. It's a spiritual dynamic. It's a spiritual life. Amen. The spiritual life is in Christ Jesus, and He wants to continually fill us. Amen. But you and I have to be mobile. We've got to be pliable. We've got to be willing to follow after Him. If He says go, we go. And if He says do, you've got to be willing to do. Amen? God wants relationship. And so we've been talking about God wants us out of some old. He wants us out of some religion. This is where Romans is talking about God through the cross and through Jesus Christ and through the Holy Spirit. He took religious Israel and the Jewish people out of some old traditions, out of some old ways, because he couldn't do what he wanted to do when they were stuck in their old ways. And so he invited them, listen, there's a new way, the book of Hebrews talks about it. It's a new way which God has inaugurated through the flesh that you and I can come boldly into the presence of God through the blood of Jesus Christ. It's a new way. Yes. And God wants to instruct you and I in, in the ways of His Spirit, in the ways of life, in the ways that will keep us fruitful and effective and filled with joy and filled with peace, fruitful labor for Him. But we have got to understand, I've got to understand that I can't stay stuck in the old. I was raised Catholic 19 years and I was used to going through a ritual, a ceremony. And I realized, looking back, it was a whole lot easier thinking I was serving God when I would just go through a ritual. Okay, I'm serving God. That's pretty easy. You, can you do that, Brad? Yeah. Can you bow your knee? Can, can, you, can you do this? Can you do that? Can you recite this? Can you, and you, you and I, we think we're serving God out of a ritual, out of a ceremony, out of tradition. And God says, I am tired of that. I really don't care about your traditions. I really don't care about your ceremonies. What I really want is to have a conversation with you. Amen. Wives are saying amen. They're talking to the husband. I really want a conversation with you. It's not you about just coming and going through traditions. You come home and, and, and sit on the couch and, and woman, give me my give me my meal and, and, and give me my this and that. And we start, you know, we go through some traditions in life that we get used to. And how many know those traditions won't last in a relationship at all? You gotta learn to set aside the old ways of doing things, some traditions, and you have to learn to relate. You have to learn, I, I, and I was terrible at this. Amen, honey? I was terrible of just <laughs> learning to relate to my beautiful wife, Heather. You know, I was, was kind of, again, just I thought it was okay that I'd just go through, you know, got, got the yard mowed, you know, and kept the car somewhat clean, did, you know, pay the bills, and we would have this wonderful, lasting marriage out of doing some certain, certain things. Does that make sense? Amen. But how many know doing some certain things, and really, you're going to get tired of that. God was saying, I'm tired of you just doing some certain things. What's really important to me is you learn to relate to me, that you sit down and you and I learn to have a conversation and enjoy each other and, and, and love each other. And you learn to hear my voice and you learn to respond. I want to hear you. You want to hear me. Together we're going to live and abide in a relationship together. And that's what Paul is talking about here as we go into Romans chapter 8. I'm tired of the ceremonial laws, but because I'm tired, I'm going to do something new and fantastic that all the world has never even known about. I'm going to send my very presence, my very being, my very spirit, the spirit of the living God to come and to live inside of you. And coming and living inside of you, I'm going to cause your spirit to become alive. And you and I are going to be able to relate together in our in spirit. How many know the Bible says those who worship God got to do it in what? Spirit. In the spirit and the truth. In spirit and the truth. God wants you and I to be able to relate to Him in our spiritual being. With our spiritual being. Because He's spirit. And He sends His Holy Spirit to come inside of the heart of the believer that has faith in Him. Amen. And then you begin to relate to Him. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, it says that the Spirit, the Spirit cries out, Abba. It cries out, Daddy. God wants a, a, a father-son, a father-daughter relationship with us. And through that relationship, 
We have to learn to move, to walk, and to go forward in the things of God. It's very important. It's very important that you and I learn to walk in relationship with one another, but especially with our God. Because traditions can get in the way. Let me just read this. Jesus came to bring about a dynamic spiritual relationship with Him through the Holy Spirit in us. He didn't come to patch us up and then let us fall apart. The new wine it represents spiritual life and fullness in Christ. Jewish religion was a worn out wineskin that would burst with the new wine of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's Christ in you. The old ritual couldn't contain that. That was just an old wineskin which would burst. Jesus didn't come to renovate Moses' law or even to mix law and grace together. He came to bring a new way of life. Relationship with Him. Life through His presence in you. Life through His Word inside of you. And life learning to relate to God through the power of the Holy Spirit which lives inside of you. Amen? Amen. Look real quick and then we're going to go to Romans chapter 8. I'm going to keep you an hour longer this morning. No. <laughs> Look at Mark chapter 7. What did I say? Did I say the right thing? Mark 13, Mark 7, for sure. Mark 7, for sure. It is. No. The title of this, Mark chapter 7, is The Followers Follow Tradition. The Pharisees and some of the scribes gathered around him when they came from Jerusalem. And it seemed that some of his disciples were eating their bread with impure hands, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they carefully, they had to wash their hands, thus observing the traditions of the elders. That was, that was scriptural, okay? That was a good thing. That was, that was a law that they had to do this, okay? But Jesus now, the new wine is coming on the scene, okay? Something new is about to take place. When they came from the marketplace, and, and when they came from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they cleanse themselves. And there are many other things which they have received in order to observe, such as the washing of cups and pitchers, copper pots. That's all a part of the law, okay? The Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat their bread with impure hands? And he said to them, Rightly did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, The people honors me with their lips. They knew how to give lip service to the Lord, but their heart, everybody say their heart. Their heart, their heart was, was far away from them, from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the precepts of men. Neglecting the commandment of God, you hold to the tradition of men. And he was also saying to them, you are experts at setting aside the commandment of God in order to keep your tradition. For Moses said, honor your father and mother, and he who speaks evil of father and mother is to be put to death. But you say, if a man says to his father or his mother, whatever I have that would help you is korban, that is to say, given to God, you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or his mother. Thus, listen to the scripture, very important. As a believer in Jesus Christ, it says, thus invalidating the word of God by your tradition, you have handed down and you do many things such as that. So what Jesus is saying here, listen, you render powerless. You, 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 you affect my ability to work in your life. My word, how many know God's word is God's word? It is his word. And I want to encourage you and I to get in the Bible like never, be never before. Some of us, including myself, we've neglected the Word of God. But I want to encourage you, get your Bible out and spend time reading the Word of God. If you do not know the Word of God, the Spirit of God, He, he uses the Word. The Spirit uses, amen, the Word of God that you know to bring it out and for that rhema word to become alive and impact other people's lives. If I don't know the word, I certainly can't sit up here and prophesy, thus saith the Lord. 
I see the spiritual ministry comes out of you and I having the Word of God implanted into our hearts and then you and I being available for the presence of God, for the Spirit of God. Amen. Sharon, this morning she had a word as she relates to God. Amen. She relates, to, she hears from God, but God does all things for the benefits of other people. God's interested in the church. So she knows that God knows that other, some people are hopeless out there. In their spirits, they're, 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 they're hopeless. And so God, by His Spirit, comes down and He brings this ring of word into her spirit. And then ministering the word of God to other people. Amen. People are ministered to. They're encouraged. They're exhorted. This is the dynamic of a church. Amen. 19 years, I never did, I was never, I never knew the dynamic of a spiritual life and the authority of God's word that impacted my life in a real way that changed my life. I was stuck in tradition. I went through tradition. And when I went through the rules and went through the motions of it, I was disconnected from God. God was distant. And that's what God is saying to you and I here. Listen, you can't, your traditions won't last you in what I have for you. I've got much more for you. So don't get stuck in your religion and don't invalidate and render my word powerless in your life for the sake of your traditions. You and I, in order to go where God wants us to be, we've got to be, Lord, I want you. I know you're alive. You're a real person. And I love you, Lord Jesus. I love you, Holy Spirit. I love you, and I want to follow up. I want to have relationship with you. Amen? Amen? And when you get that place, listen, I go out to that garden in the back, and I connect my <coughs> God like I never connected before. And I thank God for many years, and the, the Marine Corps paid me to be a missionary for, for four years. I joined the Marine Corps, and for me, most of that time, I was stuck in my dorm room. I had nothing to do in the island of Guam, but just open up my Bible and read that Bible. I read that Bible. I nourished my spirit, and there I got the Word of God in my heart, amen, and it is still there. Don't, don't underestimate the power of you memorizing Scripture because there will come a day, those things that God has put in you, that you spent time in His Word, there will come a day in when, when God wants to move and God wants to act in your life, that that Word will become alive. And it will be that ring of Word that brings you forward. You'll be able to take that next step. You don't have to get mad and frustrated and ticked off at God anymore because He's going, He's taking you forward. Why? Because your, His Word is, is in, in your heart. And, and when you take time to have relationship with Him, amen, He fills you with new wine that will take you to that next place and it will be life and, 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 and good and joy. It will be spiritual life. You'll have strength. Right. And you'll love Jesus with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. And you'll love His church. And you won't get discouraged. And you won't get disillusioned. You'll be on that straight and narrow road and you'll be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to get stuck. People get mad at me because I want, to, I, I want to reach out and love some people. I realize, listen, I, I can stay stuck in my religion where we got church here on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. We've got a Bible study Wednesday at 1030. We've got a men's group. And we get used to just going in our meetings. And those are good. But God wants more than meetings. I am so glad and privileged that you're here this morning. But it's more about you coming out of this meeting empowered by the Holy Spirit that you go and you learn to relate to God wherever you go, whether it be the, in, your, in your own den, in your own kitchen. Amen. My wife gets in that kitchen. She starts stirring up the new breads and some, some good dinners, and she's relating to the Lord. Amen. I go out to that garden and I'm, and I'm, and I'm planting seeds and I'm cutting shrubs and I'm, I'm mowing the grass, but I guarantee you I'm in that process. I'm learning to relate to the Lord and the Holy Spirit who lives inside of Brad Thickland. And he's bringing up some new things in order to direct me into a new, and into a new life. Amen? Jesus said, you render powerless my word and my ability to move in you when you stay stuck in your traditions. That's what he's talking about. 
But I love you so much, and I want so much for you. Romans chapter 8, turn into Romans chapter 8, we'll cover just a few scriptures here. Aren't you glad? We are getting Romans 8 this morning. But God, I want you to see that God doesn't want you and I to stay stuck. He doesn't want us just stuck in religion and tradition. He's got something new available for you and I, but the only way that we can fulfill what God has for us is for you and I to believe in His love, believe in His life, believe like never before. Brad, you have got the Holy Spirit of God. He lives inside of you. I don't even know a lot of people are throwing away their faith because they're walking by nothing more than their, than their feelings and their emotions. They're walking by circumstances and they haven't even yet. The only way Romans 8, chapter, chapter 8 will come alive to you is if in deep down in your heart you believe, God, you love me. You sent your spirit to empower me. And now that empowering, I'm going to be able to overcome sin. I'm going to be able to overcome religion. Matter of fact, anything that comes my way, I will be able to overcome for one reason. Because the power of the Holy Spirit lives inside of me. Amen. That's what Romans chapter 8 is all about. It's about a dynamic of the spiritual life. Romans chapter 8. Everybody okay? Amen. Is your stomach growling yet? No. Come on. Oh, oh, it's not okay, so I got some time. Good. Hold on. Romans chapter 8. Verse 1. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. I want to re reiterate here, in Christ, you have to be in Christ Jesus, amen? You can't be in a religion, you can't be in tradition, once again, you have to be in Christ Jesus. But in Christ Jesus, he says, therefore now, those that are in Christ Jesus, there is now no condemnation. There is now no judgment, amen? There's no judgment now. Why? Because Jesus Christ, He went to the cross and he, was, he judged sin there. You deserve it, but now Jesus went and He suffered condemnation on your behalf. He suffered death on your behalf. So those that are now in Jesus Christ, if you've received Him and you believe in Him and you're in Him, there is no judgment. There's no condemnation. Come on now, that's a good, good thing. You know, many of the people, again, this is what the law does. The only thing the law does is put a, bit of, put, put a bunch of guilt and condemnation and, and just beat you up. It beats you up. You can't serve the Lord that way with a beat up conscience, amen? The only way that you can serve the Lord with a joyful spirit, amen? Because He has removed it in Christ Jesus. He's removed the judgment. He's, re he's removed hell, amen? He's removed death. And now in Christ Jesus, amen, you are now alive. Judgment is gone. Yes. That should free you up. And you've got to believe that. Because as a, as a Christian, again, what do we do? We mess up. How many know we mess up? The moment we mess up, that devil, the enemy, will show up in your little ear and say, Rob, you screwed up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you screwed up more than anybody. You are the worst. You are a beast. You're a devil. And he starts just hounding you. Now we're believers in Jesus Christ. Amen? And so we have an opportunity to leave the law and the guilt and the condemnation behind. And we have the ability now to step into Romans chapter, chapter 8, chapter 8, and say, Now, no, no devil, no devil. There is therefore now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. He was condemned on my behalf. I am set free. I belong to him. I'm his son. I'm his daughter. I'm, I'm, I'm the church of the living God. I am not condemned. I have been made alive through the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no condemnation. And what you have to, you got to, this is what Paul's saying, you got to learn to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. If you don't learn to fight the faith, good fight of faith, and, and, and grab a hold of the new, grab a hold of the life. Jesus came to what? Give us life. What do you got to, you can't just let it sit out there, you got to embrace it. 
I embrace the truth of Jesus Christ. I embrace his ways. I embrace his thought. If this is what he says, I believe what he says. And I'm not going to stay stuck. So this morning, I want to invite you, don't stay stuck. Don't again allow the devil to beat you up. I've made more mistakes than anybody. I can't believe the people that expect a pastor, especially a new pastor like myself, to step in the pulpit and be perfect. <laughs> you're a pastor now. Okay. You, you must be perfect. And you, you're going to do everything right, right? And it's not long before they realize, no, I've done a lot wrong, and I'll continue to do a lot wrong. But when I do wrong, amen, I can, I can stay stuck and just say, I guess you're right. I'm a nobody. I'm nothing. I can't do anything. Right, Stephen? This is how the devil plays with it. I guess you're a failure and you can never do it because you were supposed to be perfect. And that was the expectation of everybody around you to be perfect. And you're not perfect. So I'm, because I'm not perfect, I guess I'll just drop out of this next. How many of you brides thought your husband was perfect? Prince Charming. Yes, he's arrived. We're going to have no issues, no problems. Life is perfect. <laughs> and all of a sudden, the honeymoon's over. You realize this is a real guy. <laughs> She's got some issue. This is a real girl. Wow. She's different than I am. We got some issue. You can either stop right there and you can quit. Or you can embrace the new. You can embrace the life of the Holy Spirit that dwells inside of you. And really, this all amounts to the place of love. The, the, the love of God has been shed abroad within our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. We only love a person when we realize they're imperfect. You only really love me when you realize your pastor's not perfect and you're still with me. I still have a covenant with the man. I love him. I embrace him. He's my pastor and I love him. I know he's an idiot sometimes, he's a bozo sometimes, but I love him, I care for him. All men will know that you're my disciples if you got love one for another, amen? Listen, you can't love people unless you start to partake of Romans chapter 8, amen? There is no condemnation flow there in Christ Jesus. She's my bride and I believe the best for him. She stinks, but you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna cover her. I stink, I got some issues, but because now the spirit of the living God lives inside of me, I'm going to rise up in love. And you and I, we're going to learn to live together and love each other and care for one another and stand for one another. Because the devil, he is going to come to steal, kill, and destroy. He's going to snatch, try and snatch it out of the way. And you realize through, listen, we can't stuck in just going through the motions of this thing. We've got to learn to relate. Yes. But when you learn to relate, there's intimacy that takes Amen. place. And in that closeness That's and that right. intimacy, there's a power. How many know two are better than one? Amen. I am better with my wife. Amen. 20 years married, we've learned some things. But I'm learning that we are better together. Amen. Listen, you'll only come to that place when you realize, Romans chapter 8, that God has given me the power of His Holy Spirit to step up and be a spiritual man. Amen? And take responsibility for my wife and take responsibility for my kids and take responsibility for a congregation. That's not easy. Sometimes I want to just shrivel up and, and just lock myself in the closet and say, I don't want anything to do with it, God. I'll just stay stuck right here because it's too hard. It's too difficult. Married people don't want to get married because it's too difficult. It's too hard. I'll just stay single. And I'll just partake of all the benefits of being married. Married. I can have all the sex I want, yet when I'm done, I'll just go home and sleep in my own bed. Right. I can partake of all the cooking that you want, but at the end of the day, honey, you live your life, and I'll live my life. Right. It's called easy. That's called convenient. That's called fornication, if I'd be honest. <laughs> and the Bible says if I'm honest and I love you, no fornicators or adulterers will enter the kingdom of God. I spelled it out. Why? Because... Because the Bible says, this is what the word of the Lord is. And I either honor him and I worship him, I'm willing to go forward, or I don't. Right. Where did all that come from? <laughs> Spirit. It's all about love. Amen? Really, at this church, it's about learning to love God with all my heart, soul, strength, and mind. 
It's learning to love our wives, our spouses, our kids. It's about learning to love our neighbor. Isn't that what God said in this commandment? Learn to love God and love one another. You see, Romans chapter 8, God sent His Spirit to dwell inside of you so that you could have love. And in this love, learn. Learn to love Him. Walking in relationship. Learn to love your wife and your husband and your kids and your neighbor. Learn to love them. And when you learn to love, you'll be filled, filled with life. And you'll actually become a vessel usable for me. And you'll have an abundant life that I really want for you. Let me just read a couple more scriptures and we'll be done. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life. What do you say? The law of the spirit of life. The spirit of life in Christ Jesus has done what? Sets you free from the law of sin and death. It sets you free. There's now life inside of you. And because there's life inside of you, you're not underneath that law of sin and of death anymore. You're over that thing. You're beyond that thing. It's a higher law that sets you free from this lower law. Amen? How many know there's the law of, of buoyancy that takes you over and beyond the law of gravity? The law of gravity takes you down, but there's something. Our hot air balloons for you that are new to Albuquerque in October, we have the best balloon fiesta in the world. Amen? Amen. It is a cool thing. And all these hot air balloons... They're filled with hot air, amen? They're filled with, with, with helium. And this helium, the law of buoyancy takes them over and beyond this law of gravity. Do you see that? The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, amen? This, this spirit automatically will take you beyond the law of sin and of death, amen? Do you see that? The law of the spirit of life, walking in relationship with him. For what the law could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, God did, sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And as an offering for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. God condemns sin, Stephen, in the flesh. Amen. It has been judged. Why? So that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. I'll just end the scripture there. We've got a long way to go on this thing. But I hope this is, a, is an initial start to Romans chapter 8. The power of the Spirit. The power of the Spirit. Listen, you and I, Paul says, wretched man that I am. I joyfully concur with the law of God, but I'm a flesh. I'm just a person. God, I cannot do it. What I want to do, I can't do it. Because I'm, I'm, I'm flesh. But now God says, I want to send my spirit inside of you in order that the requirement of the law itself might be fulfilled in you. So God still wants the requirement of the law. The law is holy, holy, holy. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you and I now, and by love, I can actually overcome the, 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 the sin that so easily entangles me. Amen? I, I can never give up hope. God, I believe that you want to empower me in such a way that I don't have to fall prey to lusting after women. Listen, I was raped nine years old. My father committed suicide. He left. Christmas Day. I had a void. And you know where I went? I went to pornography. I went to women. I lusted after women. Trying to, dad's gone now. There's an emptiness. There's a brokenness. There's a real hurt in my heart. Yeah. You know what young boys do? You know what the world is trying? Listen, the world is trying to fill this world. He's trying to fill our young people with, with lust and with perversion. Casinos are going crazy in New Mexico. We're, 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 we're training our people to find life where life is not. And I went there and I found out, listen, this, this gratifies my flesh, but deep down there was guilt, there was shame. Amen? And it never filled me with life. I actually got addicted to it. And then I went to booze. I, I used to like to go suck on that tap. And find that, you know, it's, girls are good, you know, but I also like to drink. There's something else I need there. I got this void in my heart. I'm going to go to the, I'm going to go and I'm going to, 
I'm going to start to drink. And in that, I found some life. But at the end of the day, when, you, when you're back at home and your head's spinning and, you, and, you're, and your rocks are all over the place, yeah. and you, you know, it's, it's stupid, it's ridiculous. What are you doing? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And people in our world, people in the church, listen, we're all really a bunch of addicts. We're addicted to some things. Yeah. And we can't do this on our own strength. You can't be a Christian. You can't follow the Lord the way He wants you to follow Him without the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. But I'm here to tell you, you and I, the power of the Holy Spirit, it is real, it is alive, and it can help you. If it helped me, it'll help you. If it helped me overcome, amen, it'll help you overcome. And I'm here to encourage you to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ like never before. Believe in the power of His Holy Spirit. You don't don't have to stay stuck. Amen. You're now a believer. There's no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. His spirit dwells inside of me and I'm going to get out of the trap. I'm going to get out of this thing. I'm going to live for God like never before. I am free indeed. I don't have to lust after women. I don't have to be stuck to the beer bottle. I don't have to stay stuck in my sin because the law, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, His love is real. It's alive. And now, He and He alone, He owns me. Yes. He owns me. He rules me. And there I find life. And that life sets me free automatically. See, religion says I'm not too bad. And if I just... Try hard enough. If I just do enough good, I'll earn God's acceptance. <coughs> and you can't do it. You can't do it. You and I fall short. But by the power of the Holy Spirit and by the love of God, the requirement, <coughs> holiness. Now, God, how many know God's after holiness? I'll finish with this thought. God wants you and I to be a chosen people, a holy nation. A royal priesthood. A people set apart for his own possession. How's that accomplished? Through Romans chapter 8. Through the power of his Holy Spirit. Now listen, he's the Holy Spirit for a reason. He's just not the Spirit. John says what? Don't believe every spirit. Right. Test the Spirit. But there's the real spirit, the spirit of the living God. He's holy and he lives inside of you. And anybody that has the Holy Spirit can't help but turn away from sin, turn away and, and turn to Jesus Christ. And in turning to Jesus Christ, he gives you love and power and life to these things. Don't hold me anymore. I'm alive and well in Jesus Christ. These things are dead. I'm dead to sin now. Does that make sense? Temptation. Temptation. Temptation is real. That's where it goes away as you get older and more in God. That's exactly right. What you were tempted in the past as you grow. We're here to grow in the love of God. That temptation, as I told you before, that 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 alcohol doesn't got anything on me. Nothing at all. It, the temptation is no longer there. Why? Because I've grown to understand the freedom in Christ. I am set free. The law of the spirit of life. And so all of us got work to do. Anybody got work to do? If you're here, you got work to do. Get your hand up. Lord, we're here to acknowledge this morning that we've got work to do. Lord, we want to walk with you. We want to have you. We want to behold you. Lord, we want the law of the spirit of life. The life that's in you. The love that's in you. We thank you right now that your Holy Spirit dwells inside of us. And you are for us this morning, Lord. We, we just thank you for the tree of life. And Lord, you said unless we reach out and partake of that tree of life, we have no life in ourselves. We realize we don't have life in ourselves. But life is in you. So we reach up in faith and we grab a hold of the life that's inside of you. The life that you placed inside of us this morning through the Holy Spirit. We embrace it. We grab a hold of it. And we choose to walk in it here this morning. We declare there is therefore no judgment, no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. We declare that we're not handicapped anymore. We're not, we don't lack anymore. Lord, you have sent your Holy Spirit. And we believe that it dwells inside of us so that we can rise up and overcome the world. Bringing glory and honor and praise to you. We believe this. Father, I pray your strength and your encouragement over your people here this morning. Give us courage to turn away from sin and to turn to you. 
Lord, you said, be ye ready. You know, we don't know the day or the hour in which you're going to come back. And so, Lord, this morning, we want to make a decision. If you're here this morning, if you've never made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, I want to give you an opportunity to make Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior. If you don't know where you're going this morning, if you were to die, Jesus invites you to come to heaven with him. He loves you and he died on a cross so that you wouldn't have to be judged. And all you have to do is reach out in faith and say, Jesus, I believe in you. I want eternal life. And so this morning, I make a decision to make you my Lord and Savior. Anybody like that, you've never done that before. You'd like to make Jesus your Lord and Savior. Nobody? Amen. But for you that are in Christ, we have to make decisions to set ourselves apart as holy unto the Lord. The Lord has my heart. Amen. And you'll be able to do that as you reach out in faith and you just believe the love that God has for you this morning. Believe in it. Believe the Spirit of God. The Bible says what? He hasn't left you. That's what the Bible says. Some of you have wandered because guilt has come, infiltrated your heart. You've wandered away because guilt and shame has, has crept in. And there's condemnation that causes you to go astray. And the Lord would have you come back this morning. Some of you, you've wandered away and the Lord is saying, I want you back. I love you. There is no other place for you but in my home and in my kingdom. You've wandered away, but this morning the Lord is saying, I want you back in my home. You're a prodigal son. I want to invite you this morning. How many would say that's me this morning? I've been a prodigal son. I've drifted away. I've been a prodigal daughter. But this morning I'm making a decision to come back home. Because I know that I know that I know that Jesus loves me. He'll never leave me. And he'll never forsake me. And in faith I'm going to come back to him. If that's you this morning, anybody? Anybody at all? Amen. Make decisions for the Lord as we go forward. Amen. Always believing that He is on your side. His Spirit lives inside of you. And He's got something in store for you. Something special. Nobody else in the world can do it, Bob, but you. Nobody else, Richard, but you. Christina, nobody else but you. And now it's nobody else can do what God has ordained me to do. So I own it. Own your faith. Own your walk. Start making decisions to honor Him and to get ready for His great return this morning. I want to thank you so much for being here and allowing me to communicate the best I can the love of God, the salvation of God. That's what we do here at Colonia Church. Yes. We love you and we're here to encourage you. We're here to encourage holy living marriages. Amen. amen. One husband, one wife, raising up, amen, families, and training our kids to love God with all their hearts and soul, strength, and mind. So. We are done here this morning, except we're still going to have some Konania. We're Konania Church because we got some more coffee, we got some donuts, we got some homemade goodies that you and I can stick around, loving.